Hi guys, welcome back to the Player YouTube channel. And today we're back at the lovely Hanbury Manor in Hertfordshire, that's in the UK. And we're with the most amazing car, I think, for value for money. This is the Kia Seed Sports Wagon. Now Kia, although it's a Korean manufacturer, this car was actually built in Slovakia. And over the last few years, 1.3 million of these cars have been sold. That equates to almost 10% of the entire sales for the Kia brand. So it's quite an important little car. There's nine different models and that's broken down through three different engine types. So you've got a 1.6, a 1.4 and a 1 litre and they change between petrol and diesel. There are three different trim levels as well and two different gearboxes. You've got a six speed manual and a seven speed auto. All in all, the car comes with a 100,000 mile seven year warranty. We're going to discuss that a little bit later about the servicing and stuff. Seed, the actual name, comes from Community of Europe, European Designed, C-E-E-D, and that's where they got the name from. It's a fabulous car. It starts at around £18,850. Let's go and take a look at it. Let's get under the bonnet, get it out on the road and give our evaluation of this new product from Kia. Let's start by taking a look up front. You get what Kia calls the tiger nose. Yeah, I can sort of see it, the shape of it, but that's that new grille. It's really nice. But what I do love about this, and it's very reminiscent of the new Porsche lights as well, is called the ice cube lights. There's four of them wrapped around the running light in the middle there. It's really nice, especially at night when you're driving along as well. I love that. A couple of decent fogs down the front, a nice sort of lower edge to this car which makes it look very sort of smart and sporty as well let's crack on and go around the side right let's take a look down the side of the car now the first thing you're going to notice it comes with a decent set of alloys these are 16 inch there is an option on the sort of higher price cars to go for a 17 inch it comes with 205 55 16 tires now these to replace just to let you know are around about 44 uk pounds and i'm sure wherever you are in the world you'll find an equivalent to that so they're quite reasonably priced Looking at the lines down the side, I love these roof bars, really nice. And they've got the little pop out things there for roof racks. So if you're a bit of a DIY enthusiast, this would be perfect because it's a lovely long car as well. Plenty of space in the back. And on that note, let's go and check in the back. Let's check what it's like in the back for your passengers. Well, first of all, it's very comfortable and there's plenty of headroom as well. You've got a little flap here for putting bits and pieces and to be honest yeah i'd be quite comfortable here for a couple of hours the only thing is there is no independent heating control system as you can see and there's nowhere to charge any portable devices so if you have got a couple of kids it's you're not going to want to be going too far in this car because they're going to be screaming they need to charge stuff up and uh, probably bored as hell um you do get a very nice uh, armrest here and a double cup holder which is lovely there isn't any scope for you know like the ski rack as we call it or putting your long items through there there's, there's no no hatch for that however you do get springy in and outy um, ice fix points which is great and let's do the uh, the center piece check yeah it's going to be a little bit tight because it's actually pushing my back forward so probably a lift home from the pub would be about your limit on this middle seat the only good thing is there's no transmission tunnel well there's literally that much the rest of it well you've got a very sort of old-fashioned button up here for your courtesy light and there is somewhere to hang a coat from as well both sides it's basic but it's comfortable and i think at the end of the day that's what counts let's go and have a look in the boot round at the boot well it's got a couple of nice decent led rear lights on it as well there are no exhausts because there's only one underneath anyway and do you really need anything to look sporty on this i don't think so but it's clean and it's very nice and it all makes sense got a nice uh, diffuser on the top there as well with a stoplight as well there is no assisted tail lift on this but you weren't expecting that not for the money so and to be honest it was quite light i did it with one hand you do get the dreaded parcel shelf but it is very easy to slide back that i do love and it flips over and it's so easy to take in and out as well um, putting the seats down in the back is also very simple you just lean over like that flip the lid and you've got a 60 40 split that goes almost flat which is amazing on the side here you've got no less than one two shopping 
bag holders and there's another one over here as well as a 12 volt adapter i mean whoever's designed this car has really thought about the family or the the you know the mum going shopping or the dad going to the diy store it's all there and it all makes sense um underneath here well this is like a split level you get a massive great cubby box here for storing bits and pieces which is lovely and if you lift this one up this one goes right the way back as well and you've got yet again like a pannier that comes right out so this i'll pull this right over so you can see and there you've got your space saver wheel as well so this this is just wonderful really good design so you've got the the jack in the middle there you've got the the spanner to get the wheel off with sorry about the squeaky bits and pieces that's the polystyrene but the major thing is you've got a proper wheel in there and that i think is essential in today's modern driving Around the side here, well, again, more places to store stuff. I mean, it's all really cleverly thought out and ever so easy, you know, to, to actually to pull it all apart and use it, which is nice. Um, I really love the boot of this car. Actual size-wise, well, it is the leader in its class, so it has the most boot size in this class of car. With the seats up, is 625 litres. With the seats down, 1,625 litres. I mean, you will get whatever you want in the back of this car, trust me. All that we need to do now is go and have a look up front and see what it's like for the driver and the passenger. Here we go, guys. Let's have a look up front, see what it's like for the, uh, for the driver. Well, it's a quite a good comfortable position. Seat's really nice and bolstered as well. I like that. This isn't keyless. Unfortunately, it is a key. I say unfortunately. I mean, at the end of the day, it's not that much difference. I'm going to put the key in just to get it out of the way for a minute, and that's going to end up beeping and doing all sorts of things. But it will bring up the nav system and the actual screen itself. So it's a choice. Of, well, it's not a choice. Depends on how much you're paying. You either get an 8-inch TFT or you will get the bigger 10-inch TFT. And... It does come with a few very, very useful bits and pieces as standard. So there is, naturally, there is a Bluetooth connection in here. There's also Apple Play and there's Android Auto mirroring as well, which is great. The screen itself, it's not the best of screens. I'm going to put it into the, uh, this is into the DAB radio mode. Um, you do get the, and then when you go into the media side, you can, that's where you can change into your Bluetooth or whatever you're using. The good thing about this is when you're using it, it is very, very quick. And I love the nav system. The nav is one of those active nav systems. So it updates automatically. So it will actually tell you if there are parking spaces available, things like that. Another good thing with the Kia system is it comes with an app. So if you're sort of half, you know, know what you're doing with the app, you can almost pre-program your destination on the app and at the same time it'll also find the car if you happen to lose your car in a car park or somewhere which is yeah, it's quite cool I like that so that's the app that comes with it as well set up very easy comes with obviously with the phone and stuff like that it's all pretty bog standard to be honest with you very very standard heating controls here it is aircon I assure you <laughs> there is an, an aircon button here somewhere um, and but it's basically on and hot or cold there's no independent there's not one for the passenger and one for the driver not on this entry model entry level model you do get two 12 volt adapters here at the front which is really good and you get a usb adapter in the middle and an aux out as well which is good double cup holder with for some reason my door keys are still in here so we'll move them out of the way um, and also quite a large cubby box here which is really good. And one thing I do like about this car, you get a proper handbrake. This is the manual six speed. Uh, as I was telling you at the beginning, there's a choice of the manual six speed or there is a auto seven speed. Um, steering wheel, right. Well, on the right here, you do get with this cruise control and you get lane departure warning system as well. And that is all set up on the right hand side. On the left hand side, you have the voice recognition system, the telephone, to make and receive calls and you get the scrolling button which comes up here on the instrument panel and you've got various different things that will come up and tell you your trip computer uh, how long you've got how much petrol you've got you know all bits like that coming up on the center standards dials either side um, so they're not digital in any way very simple easy to use controls as well with the lights and with the wipers for the windscreen um, all in all it's just a nice standard car um, moving the steering wheel up and down is 
it's not bad you get quite a lot of movement with that it's quite good um, and you get a good seating position one good thing about this car which I did notice you can have multiple Bluetooth devices on it so if I want to use my phone for example for the nav system let's say and that will come up here then your passenger can choose the tunes so it's a multi Bluetooth device I think that's really great um, let's get it out on the road and see what it's um, what it feels like to drive So here we are out on the road in the Kia Sport Wagon and the first thing you're going to notice is number one how comfortable it is I was really really shocked um, it's quite a long wheelbase on this car and I think because of that you get a really good spread from the bump at the front going to the rear so you don't get this constant vibration that you do in a lot of shorter wheelbase cars of this kind um, it's a lovely comfortable driving position with a massive great windshield on the front here um, which gives you plenty of all-round vision the windows are exceptionally big or they feel big they feel bigger than normal to me um, it's really really nice indeed a couple of um, the safety aids on this car well there's quite a few bits and pieces to go through I'm not going to bore you with the whole lot but I'll tell you the bits that are missing there's, that's a good way to go about this uh, there's no blind spot mirrors for starters um, that is, I think that's essential in today's modern driving. That should come as standard. You should skip some of the, like the, the driver awareness sensor, you know, things like that. I mean, that's just no point. Another annoying thing on this car is it tends to pick up um, people, pedestrians and cyclists and what it thinks are potential obstacles or potential accidents about to happen. And it starts beeping, like beep, 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 beep all the time. And it just, it gets really annoying, especially in town. When you've got pedestrians you know on the side of the street um let's let's talk about a little bit on the economy because this car is exceptional it's not good it is exceptional we are getting around about 53 to the gallon now you've got to remember this is a big estate car this is a 1.6 diesel engined estate car giving 53 to the gallon so working that out if you've got five passengers in here two dogs and you know a bicycle and what else the rest of the garden shed in the back um, it's just going to be amazing value for money for taking someone out for the day or wherever you're going um, a commuting or a, a business type car is absolutely perfect for this and with the hundred thousand seven year mile seven year warranty hundred thousand mile um, you know how can you go wrong with this let's just discuss that warranty for, for a minute because there's a few things that I'd like to clarify a lot of people go wow let's go buy a car because it's got a seven year warranty this one's got a five year warranty well this is an award winning warranty and there's a reason for that there's always a reason but nothing there's no such thing as a free lunch guys you know that as well as I do um, so it's essential that the, the actual the construction of how this warranty is put together is explained um, in order to keep the warranty you have to have this car regularly serviced now for the diesel engine they reckon every 10,000 miles or once a year and for the petrol version of this car they are reckoning on 20,000 miles or one year again you don't by law there is no legal requirement for you to have this car as serviced by a Kia uh, for if it's Kia if it's another manufacturer again is no legal requirement however over the years people have gone to you know very bona fide places to get their cars serviced and they get their logbook stamped by the but there are some dodgy people out there and unfortunately this is sort of now it's going to come back and bite you in the backside because now it all has to be done by computer and providing you've got this car registered on the computer on their system that's fine but when you go back you might be saving a bit of money it might only cost you 250 UK pounds for a service on this car which is what I found out um, if you go to Kia with a three five or seven year policy it's 300 pounds 280 to 300 it's somewhere in that region um, my way of thinking is what's the point in saving 50 quid it's going to cost you that once a year to go and have this car paint checked because in order to keep the paint warranty going on this car you have to go once a year and have it checked and that's if you're not on a Kia plan that costs you 50 UK pounds and I'm sure that's the same wherever you are in the world so 
it's just none of this makes financial sense. Secondly, when you come to sell the car, you, the, the warranty is transferable to the new owner. That's quite, that's normal. But I think given a new owner would be, if, if you just had a logbook, if, you know, it's just not quite credible. And then to get it checked out on the computer, it's all gonna say, so basically what I'm trying to say is, it's not worth saving the money. You might as well take a three, five or seven year plan with Kia and have it have keep the warranty the cars looked after you get regular software updates that's another thing you're probably thinking software updates what do i need a software update well believe it or not there's the the mapping on these cars and stuff is all done remotely now you know you don't go into a garage and they tune it up for you. it's all done remotely it's, it's absolutely amazing and i think that in itself is probably worth you know when you come to sell the car and someone goes oh have you had it has the software been updated are the maps up to date and all this thing you get all that as part of that kia service so remember, sometimes it is really worth it. And for the sake of, you know, a few pounds here and there, what can I say? Um, great sound system on the car, great comfort. It's nice and quiet. Listen to that. Beautiful. And the gearbox is superb. I do actually quite like this manual gearbox. I've got a feeling if I was doing a few more miles, I'd probably go for the auto seven speed um, and just put in some, you know, some some mirrors that warn me that on my blind spot that's all I want and I've got everything I need in a car um, as you probably know we review hundreds of cars um, if you if you click up here you'll see loads of different bits and pieces that we do AJ the player you can't miss us but the one thing that I haven't told you we do we have a magazine for guys yes so if you're a guy and you want to have a look at a decent magazine careful guys not what you're thinking with cars, with boats, with holidays, with golf, with cigars, with wines, you name it, everything us guys absolutely love, then go to www.theplayer. I put a point in down there because it's coming up now. Go there, subscribe, it's totally free. It's a 220 page magazine with loads of bits that you will absolutely love. Don't forget also, subscribe, like, and comment. And I love your comments, keep them coming in and I'll catch you next week with another car. This is AJ the Player signing out and wishing you safe driving.